Yes, Adam's one sin brings condemnation to everyone, but Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and new life for everyone. Because one person disobeyed God, many became sinners. Sin nature, however you want to slice it theologically, we all were in that boat. But he said now, but because one other person obeyed God, many will be made righteous. Righteous, it's a gift, it's not an award, it's a gift. And there's a huge difference. An award is something I earned. I earned an award. That's why every award show you've ever seen, they accept an award and, and all of the all of the humility is false humility. Oh, I just want to thank God and I want to thank all these people that helped me get that's a bunch of garbage. Hey, you, they get a I'm so humbled by this. Oh, give me a break. You're not humbled by this. You just walked out. I'm not, you know, you're not humbled by this. The only person in the history of awards to ever accept an award with any sincerity at all was Snoop Doggy Dog when he accepted the award on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's on the internet. It's on the way he accepted it. The man stood up. The one guy, think what you want about Snoop Doggy Dog, Calvin Brodus. You don't know him like that. I'm just telling you, this guy actually accepted it with at least sincerity at least honesty. Here's what he did. He stood up on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He said, I'd like to thank me. <laughs> He's like, I'd like to thank myself for all the work I've done, for the times I got my own self up out of bed, for the times that I came. He, he just went on and go, you know, for all the hard work and the dedication and the tenacity and for not listening to the haters and, and for continuing to go when people told me to quit. He goes, I'd just like to thank myself. You know, I was like, hey, Calvin, I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate, because that's an award. You earned it. A gift is different. I didn't earn a gift. I didn't earn a gift. Self-righteousness is the belief that I could do enough on my crust to have the best crust. I have the be it's a crust competition. It's, and we all know who has the best crust. It's Papa John's. Everyone knows that. It's not even debatable. But, but, but to try to get the crust right, that's what we try to do is it's a crust competition. And Jesus said, no, it's not an award it's a gift. It's a gift. Righteousness is a gift through Jesus. Look what it says in Romans 10, 4. It says, for Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. All right, get this. Why was the law given? What was the purpose? To define righteousness, to define it. He said, Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all who believe him are, uh, in him are made right with God, are made righteous 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18 said, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Okay, this is again, what's behind the language of being born again? What is behind that language? It's essentially going, you're born with new DNA, with a new epicenter, with a new core, without a sin nature. You have righteousness at your core. It says anyone who belongs to Christ is a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And all of this, look at this, verse 18, don't miss this. All of this is a gift from God. It's a gift, not an award. It's a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, God made, look at this, him who had no sin to be sin for us so that we might become the righteousness we might become the righteousness of God. Well, what does this have to do with anything? What are we talking about righteousness? This has everything to do with everything. Because what the enemy will do in your life is discourage you and condemn you. Because even though I've given my life to Jesus, and even though, even though the reality is that the gift of righteousness is at the core of who you are. You, it's not a sin nature. You have righteousness as your core. Something comes out of my mantle that I'm still working on. I'm still trying to figure out. I still want to do something. We're, we're, we're back to Romans 7, and I thank God for the honesty of Paul who said, man, there's a war going on inside of me, and something keeps coming out, and I want to want to do the right thing, but sometimes I don't even want to do the right thing. And something bubbles out, and the enemy condemns and says, see, look at you. At your core, you're still disgusting. At your core, you're still gross. At your core, you're still broken. At, the, at your core, you're still sinful. You got this sin nature. It, 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 the the nature of you. If we peel back all the layers of you, it's, it's dirty. 
It's bad, and that's a lie from the pit of hell. This is why Paul in Romans 7 goes through this whole convoluted journey of the thing I want to do, I don't do, and the thing I don't want to do, I do. And then he calls himself a wretched man, a tortured man. What's wrong with me? Who will free me from this? What is the answer for this? And he said, thank God for Jesus. And he says, and then, and then if, you, if you're not careful, you would think that Romans ends at Romans 7. But it doesn't end at Romans 7. There's more chapters. It ends, Romans 7 ends right there. But he says, after all of this, like, why are things coming out of me? that aren't good if I'm supposed to be good at my core. And he flip it to Romans 8, and the first verse of Romans 8 is, so there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation. Why would Paul say that? Because he knows. He knows what we know, which is this. When you're in this crazy life and something's coming out from inside you, you wonder where it's coming from, and the enemy will use the ugly thing that came to the surface. The outburst that came out, the thing that came out of your mouth. And he'll go, if you were really a Christian, if you really had the spirit inside you, you wouldn't do it. This just proves it's all hocus pocus and, and you're living a fairy tale and this is all a bunch. And, 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 and you are still tainted and you'll see yourself as dirty. So God's righteousness doesn't attract me because I just think of his righteousness compared to my dirty, nasty sin nature. And I don't understand that actually righteousness is a gift given to you and given to me through the blood of Jesus, through the work of Jesus that has now declared me righteous, that God made he who had no sin to do this, to give me the gift so that I might become the righteousness of God. It's what's at the center. This is a massive understanding because it will affect how you see yourself the condemnation that the enemy tries to heap on you, he does successfully all of the time. And the evidence that he uses to accuse you with is something that came out of your mantle. So he lies to you about your core because of something that came out of your mantle. Your mind, will, and emotions are still a work in progress. You're still digging through things from your past. You're still working through, why do I even want to do that? You're still working through that. But if you don't see this and understand this for what it is, you'll lack the courage to even get in there and dig around because you think, I don't want to know what I'm going to find. What I'm going to find is that the core is something broken and ugly and disgusting. 